triumph of the Roman Empire over Greece might be better described as a transformation rather than a conquest. The process took place over a period of some 250 years. Due to the annexation of many different kingdoms with their own languages and religious beliefs, the Greco-Roman world ended up with scores of gods and goddesses, many of them exactly the same but having different names because of all the different languages. Recognized as the rulers of heaven and the underworld, entire nations were governed based on the proclamation of oracles claiming to represent them. A very good example can be found at Delphi in Greece. What we would call mythology, the ancient Greeks and Romans accepted as fact. And according to that mythology, Delphi was the center of the universe. Supposedly, Zeus, the chief of the gods, sent eagles in different directions. One traveled east and one traveled west. After circling the globe, they met at Delphi. And there, the Omphala stone, or navel stone, was placed to represent the center of the universe. The sanctuary of the sun god Apollo was built there and the eternal flame burned in the hearth of the temple. Delphi is best known as the seat of the famous Delphic Oracle, an oracle being what we would call a fortune teller. There in the temple of Apollo sat a woman upon a chair with three legs called a tripod. The oracle would fall into a trance as the sun god Apollo supposedly possessed her spirit, and in a state of stupor, she would sit there and babble. The priest of Apollo would then interpret what she had said, and believe it or not, the actions of entire nations were based on the proclamations of the Delphic Oracle. Once again, because of all the different languages, the various sun gods had different names, even though they had the same attributes. In the year 273, the Roman Emperor Aurelian dedicated a temple to all the sun gods under the title Sol Invictus, the Invincible Sun. Forty-eight years later, Constantine the Great, who is said to have envisioned himself as the sun god Apollo, was recognized as the first Christian emperor. While professing Christ and at the same time honoring the sun god Sol Invictus, Constantine made it a law in the Roman Empire that everybody would rest on the first day of the week, day solace, the day of the sun, Sunday. The fourth commandment states that we are to rest on the seventh day, not Sunday. Sunday rest can be traced directly to pagan mythology. The Sabbath day can be traced directly to our Creator. Earnestly contending for the faith once delivered to the saints, I'm Richard Reeves with Just the Facts.